the next study up is one of those that I referred to that was published in November of 2023. This one I find especially interesting because a lot of my doctoral work and professional work interests around the time of my doctorate was spent learning about purported cognitive enhancement agents that could be obtained legally over the counter in the United States. This study was the first to show that the popular mushroom lion's mane does in fact positively impact cognitive performance in young healthy people after only a single dose. There is some past research showing lion's mane did improve cognitive functions and mood, but those studies are typically using routine dosing for weeks at a time and in a much more elderly population. This study for the first time shows improvements in young people and after a single dose. This study was titled The Acute and Chronic Effects of Lion's Mane Mushroom Supplementation on Cognitive Function, Stress, and Mood in Young Adults, a Double-Blind Parallel Groups Pilot Study. For this study, 1.8 grams of lion's mane mushroom powder, so it was a powder and not an extract, or a placebo was given to a group of 41 people aged 18 to 45 years old. The powder was taken every day for a period of 28 days and yielded very intriguing results. In the short term, that's one-time administration, participants exhibited improved performance in what's called the Stroop test, indicating enhanced processing speed and selective attention. Selective attention would be focusing on a specific aspect of information while simultaneously ignoring other irrelevant information. One example of selective attention would be the cocktail party effect. This is the phenomenon that occurs when you're at a party and despite the multitude of noises around you and all the other distractions that you can actually tune in and listen, listen to and understand a single conversation that you might be engaged in. You're effectively able to filter out and ignore competing stimuli. However, the cocktail party effect usually refers to auditory stimulus and as is the case with this test, we're referring more to a, a visual stimulus. Now, after four weeks of using the lion's mane powder, there was a notable trend towards reduced subjective stress reported in the people receiving the supplement. The theoretical mechanism for lion's mane's ability to affect learning and memory is its ability to increase brain-derived neurotrophic factor, more popularly known as BDNF. As is implied in the name, this is a neurotrophin. Neurotrophins are a group of proteins that help brain cells survive, function, and develop throughout life. Some of the top factors influencing the release and activity of BDNF in the brain include stress, exercise, nutrition, as well as environmental novelty. So do the results of this study mean that you should go out and buy a tub of lion's mane's powder? Well, not necessarily. Although the results of this study are exciting and promising, I do have to note that studies with larger sample sizes are needed to replicate and confirm these findings. And lastly, it had been brought to my attention that there's some kind of internet movement to discredit Lion's Mane on the basis of some Reddit users, I believe, claiming that it's giving them unwanted side effects in the form of depression, anxiety, insomnia, lack of libido, libido and so forth. There's a claim that lion's mane counteracts an enzyme called 5-alpha reductase, though to my knowledge, there's no actual strong scientific evidence to suggest as much. Now, that's not to say that some people may respond unfavorably to high-dosed lion's mane powder or extract. In fact, there's going to be a small percentage of the population that you'll find respond negatively or not at all to things where there's evidence to support people responding well to the very same things. This itself is not evidence or rationale against using something, so that's really important to understand for one. Likewise, I'm unable to take personal anecdotes from Reddit, especially from people who would appear, appear to be using multiple questionable compounds alongside each other and then make sweeping population-wide statements or recommendations to people. So there's that. Lastly, and especially as it comes to compounds with supposed cognitive effects in people, you absolutely cannot take a potential mechanism and then predict the effect that it's going to have in one person, let alone all people. To do so is to really lack an understanding of human biology and how that responds to certain compounds and the process through which science must go to understand how these compounds affect human physiology. So I say all that to inform you, the listener, and to help equip you, 
equip you all to think critically about blanket claims made that you hear on the internet. 